the, uh, do you know about the Coas County project in the state of New Hampshire? It's a 33 megawatt project I'll talk about in a minute. And it was just announced this week that they signed, Fremont Power signed a power purchase agreement by the electric, some portion of the electricity from there. I'd be willing to bet they're paying more than the wholesale cost of natural gas. I'd be willing to bet they're paying two to three times more for the electricity coming out of that wind project. No fuel costs. But why are you paying so much for it? What they did, it's stably priced. It's stably priced electricity because they locked in a price over the price of anything else it's selling, almost certainly, and they're locked in for the next 20 years, or whatever time term that is. So it doesn't matter that wind doesn't have a cost, the fuel, you're still paying a lot of money. In fact, it was right in the press release, something to the effect of Vermont, their customers will see a higher cost because of that project. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Um, greenhouse emission reductions. Do you know how that's figured out? Do they say that wind is clean, it's going to result in a reduction in our greenhouse gases, it's going to be, it's so much better than fossil fuel because of it. How do they, what are they, what's going on? Do, do the turbines suck carbon dioxide out of the air? I sometimes think people think that. Fact is, what you, in order to really know the benefit there, you have to do a model of the New England region. Look at every power plant that's running at any point in time, understand what's turning on, what's turning off, and evaluate how much of the existing fossil fuel facilities only are back down when the wind project is blowing. We don't have that model. No model exists like that at the moment. Maybe, maybe this latest one is an attempt to look at the one that I mentioned, the Eastern Interconnection. It's an attempt to look at that. In New York, what they found is that when wind blew, 1,275 megawatts of wind in the state of New York, when the wind blew, guess what got out? Other renewables. It wasn't backing down fossil fuel. It's backing down other renewables. In the state of Maine, Stetson Project. It's a 57 megawatt project that was went online early last year. It goes into a transmission line, feeds into a transmission line that at the time when it was put online was known to be 100% at capacity. There was no room on the transmission line and wind was feeding into it. Guess what was filling up the transmission line? Two new renewable projects, a biomass facility and a hydro plant. We had a net zero reduction in greenhouse gases because that project went online. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're making it up. That wind project's not backing down anything. In fact, it's, it's resulting in other renewables being backed down. The next slide. Stable, secure, sustained electricity. Okay, I want to show you three slides from that Stetson project. If you go to the first one. This is a very typical profile of generation out of a wind project, at least east of the Mississippi. The line that you can't quite see the numbers here, but the numbers along the bottom represent every hour of the day on April 8, 2008. And on the side here is the capacity. The highest number up there is 40% capacity. So you see that project at 1 o'clock in the morning produced a little over 35% capacity. That means that even though it's a 57 megawatt project, the wind was blowing, such it was producing some wind, some generation, but 35% of its maximum capacity. By 4.30 in the morning, it was down to between 5 and 10, around 8 megawatts. Then at 7, it jumped up to 20, 27, 28. And it went down, down, up, down, up, down. Would you run your hospital on that? 
Let's say this was just the power plant that was servicing your hospital. Would you run it on that? Would you run your car on that? Let's try the next slide. This is even worse. But what you will notice is the time of day and time of year, or at least the time of day when you don't need it, it's way up there, boy. You're getting tons of wind when you're sleeping. And then it backs down again. This is typical. This is typical of wind. What you don't see is what's happening within one hour. Try 10 minute intervals. Try a gust coming through. Really, it's happening with wind. Okay, do the next one, last one. And here it is again. How can you reliably predict anything from that? If I were to put this slide up, it's showing the production out of the Piggy on Seabrook because it's a big, reliable facility. I'll just, okay, I'll pick a natural, Newington Natural Gas Facility. What do you think you're going to see on that? Straight line. Pretty straight line. At least for our purposes. Maybe there are fluctuations within. For our purposes, it's reliable and it's there. Okay, oh, go back one more. Go back. Okay, environmentally sensitive. This is the one that takes my heart breath away. Wind is clean, we talked about that. And it is sensitive to the environment. You see that picture there? That picture is from Kibbe Mountain in Maine. That's the road that was built to get to the wind turbines. There was a 50 to 60 foot ledge cut that was put in place by the developer so he could run his turbines up the, up the road, up the mountain. And in order to ensure that that's a stable road, they have to build it into the mountain. So they cut that 50, there's people, I don't know if you can see them, to just get your sense of it. Right there, there are four people standing in this picture. If this is bad, project in Coas County, it's worse. Go to the next slide. The reason I'm raising this is because the Coas County Wind Project was approved by the Site Evaluation Committee in the state of New Hampshire in July time frame. It's under appeal right now. Both Green Mountain Power signed a contract to buy the power. Which means that when you consume the electricity coming from that, this is what you're sanctioning. A massive road system, 33 miles in length. In, some, in most of the area on the very top of the mountain, 36 feet wide. Wider than a two-lane interstate highway. Wider than 91. 50-foot ledge cuts go right through, all over the place. Where at elevation is 2,700 feet and better, up to 32, 3,300 feet. 13 acres of wetlands filled. Has anyone here heard of a project that had 13 acres of wetlands filled? I asked a, a wetland specialist on the witness stand during this process. When has he ever seen that? His response is, you don't see it very often, only on highway projects. Oh gee, this is a highway project. Tree clearing and extensive road development. The reason it's, the reason it's sensitive above 2,700 feet because when you get up there, it's a very difficult terrain, and the habitat up there and the forest growth very difficult for it to grow. We have old forest out there that has, never been, that has not been touched, we believe, in 200 years. And it's going to be plowed over for this project. EPA, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, New Hampshire Fishing Game, New Hampshire Audubon, and TNC, to Nature Conservancy, all oppose the project because of the environmental effects. If it's built, in my personal opinion, through one of the worst degradations of the environment seen in this region in years. That's what wind is all about. I don't call that environmentally sensitive. And there's no way to put that in, in any way, to say that that is environmentally sensitive. So, thank you very much.